Okay, that should be recording now. Kia ora everybody. Um, Sophie here, the Eons Kaiarahi, and I have um, Gail with us today, who is the owner and kaiako at uh, Tiaki ECE, where uh, my little boy Benji is lucky enough to uh, attend. And um, she's just going to share with us a little bit about uh, how they use um, Purako um, to, um, I guess, uh, help our tamariki learn about um, their place and, and where they're from and some of the awesome things that they do with that. So, um, yeah, kia ora, Gail, and thanks for um, your time. <laughs> Kia ora, that's okay. Um, would you would you like to share with us a little bit about um, just what we've spoken about around um, kind of maybe how you've explored uh, Purako, uh, po possibly the one of Ihinga or whatever you want to talk about? Um, a bit of a yeah overview of that and yeah, thank you. Yep. So um, our vision at Tiaki is to walk softly on the earth, and part of that is around children connecting with nature and the outdoors and one way we've found um, to do this is to use Purako as a vehicle for our learning and our planning. Um, we're very lucky where we are. We have um, so many different stories and pakiwaitara to choose from. We've got um, Hinimo and Tanakai and Hatupatu. Um, we've got uh, Naturoirangi and the story of Tarawira. Um, the one I'll talk about today is our ihinga purako, and we use um, Auntie B's puka puka that she's written on ihinga. Um, ihinga is important to us here because ihinga was the grandson of um, Tamati Kapua, who was the captain of the Arawaka. So there's a real whakapapa back to, to where we are located. Um, and it's around the tamariki actually learning about the how these places were named um, and the importance of the different maunga and awa of um, Rotorua. So that's um, kind of the, the reasoning behind it because we know that when children spend time in a place, um, they really learn to love the place. And if they love that place, then they'll, they will look after it. They'll become kaitiaki of those areas. Yeah, so awesome too. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about the haerenga that the tamariki uh, went on um, as part of learning about ihinga and um, like why this was also an important aspect of that um, for tiaki? Yep, so um, we followed in the footsteps of ihinga. So we started by um, going to Makatu, which is where Arawaka landed. Um, so first of all, we read the story a lot and we talked about it a lot and then we actually decided we would go and visit these places because actually physically going somewhere really makes you connect with the place. Yeah. Um, we also went to um, the Kaituna River and saw you know, that awa that Ihinga named and the Ohau Channel and then we've been up um, the top of Nomataha Maunga and the final place we would love to visit is Makoya Island. Wow. So, um, these places are really special to the tamariki here because every week they um, go out of the centre one day a week and for this group of children they venture to the top of a, a reserve, a little mountain called Te Kukute Manua and from the top there they can actually look down onto Lake Rotorua, Nui a Kahu Matamamoi and they can see Makoya Island and then they can look across and they can actually see Nomotaha. So these are places that are really special to them. Um, and it also helps them to connect with their own maunga and their own awa. So they become curious about what their special mountain is. And for some that is Nomotaha, but for others it is yeah, different maunga. So we, we get to learn about that and share that with their whanau. And yeah, again, it's about them finding out who they are and where they belong. Yeah, that's amazing. And you must see like huge growth in the tamariki as well through um, through these kind of pūrāko and journeys that you go on with them. Yep, definitely. And it's always um, 
surprising for us. We don't really have a fixed agenda of where the learning's going to go. It's often just listening to the tamariki and, and hearing about what interests them. And um, I remember one, for one group of children, it was around the, um, the birds on Macquarie Island was what fascinated them. So that sparked a whole other area of learning around, you know, what birds are there and why it's a bird sanctuary. And yeah, so there's always lots of different learning and different avenues that the children sort of take an interest in. So that's exciting as a kayak or um, yeah, you never kind of know what you're going to be following up on or yeah, where the children will take you. Yeah. Um, how have you as kayak or um, kind of, you know, developed your knowledge around um, these pūrako? Where, where did you go to find that information and learn the stories? We have um, been lucky enough to attend some professional development with our local hapu um, and they have told us some stories and the history around the area that, that we have and with our local kahuako, we're just in the middle of doing some professional development with them as well. So it's around making those connections with the people and hearing their stories um, is definitely the best way to learn. Otherwise, you, know, you can go online and Google things and read articles and yeah, yeah but actually connecting with the people is, has been the most, we, where we've learned the most and those real personal stories, you know, listening for when, when they grew up, what they used to do in the area and how it's changed and what we can do, you know, to make that area go back to how it used to be. Yeah. yeah looking at the wetland area and things like that. Yeah. 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 You guys do an amazing job with um, the wetlands eh, and the, the planting you've done down there. And yeah. Ricky. Yeah. Um, so, for others hearing um, about this who might want to do something similar but aren't sure where to start, do you have any words of wisdom or advice around um, in, around any aspect, whether it's the practical side such as transport cost supervision or the uh, the learning side? Um, yeah, if you've got any any words of wisdom, that would be awesome to share. The first thing we did was actually make a commitment as a team to actually go out of the centre. So yeah. to set those days where the groups would go, um, that was really important. And then we have a risk-benefit risk form. So we're looking at the benefits of what the children are going to be learning um, rather than looking at the risks all the time because sometimes yeah. that can overweigh, you know, what, what you really want to be going to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the more you go out with the tamariki, the easier it gets and they get to learn you know, what they need to be doing and you know, what's acceptable and how to look after themselves and each other as well. Um, for our trips away, we often um, have whanau support to get to places. And, but just recently, we've been lucky enough to be able to borrow that one of the um, local primary school school vans, which has um, been really, really helpful. So yeah, making those connections with our community. We'd love a van for ourselves. That would be even better, but <laughs> you just sort of, yeah, make do with what you've got. And again, the children are really used to going out of the center. So mm. they know what's expected and yeah. uh, how to keep themselves safe. So. Yeah. And trusting, uh, trusting them to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. And um, one more question before we finish up. Um, would you like to share with us some of the other um, pūrako that you have explored uh, with the tamariki? Because um, that's just really interesting and, and super cool, especially seeing uh, my boy, um, you know, be part of it all. Yep. So um, one that the older children are looking at at the moment, which Benji is looking at, is... Um, the Natsuroirangi and Te Parawera and um, how the geothermal activity came to this area. So it's, yeah, it's always really cool to see how you can weave in all the curriculum areas like science and literacy and maths into using these pūrāko. Um, we're looking at ways to increase the children's understanding around yeah, what's happening and um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. That's awesome. That's um, yeah. That's 
that's probably um, pretty good. And thanks for sharing um, sharing your stories with us and um, what kind of what you've been getting up to with these little ones. I just think they're so lucky to um, be part of Tiaki and get to um, explore the Purako with the help of their kayako and visit these very significant places that they live in and understand the history and um, yeah. So thank you so much for being willing to share today. It's okay. I think we're really lucky to have um, you know these tamariki that teach me all the time and. And it's so important that they become the kaitiaki of, of our earth. So, yeah, yeah. I feel really privileged. So, thank you. No worries. I will stop that recording. Uh, thank you. Um, right.